Is a shortwave radio a critical component of a prepper's toolbox? Maybe, maybe not. It depends. And I'll actually talk about something that's even better than a shortwave radio that you really ought to invest in. So if this is of something that you're interested in, let's get started. Hey, this is MJ, call sign KW3KW, and welcome to another episode of Ham Radio Made Simple. Today is a continuing part of my series. It's episode two on the myths and misunderstandings of ham radio used in our prepping strategy. Today I'll focus on is shortwave relevant for prepping? If you find these episodes useful that someone else ought to watch and see, hit the like button or the subscribe button. This has nothing to do about me, but helping others to find or stumble across these videos a little bit easier. On my agenda, I'm going to talk about what is shortwave radio. I'll answer pretty much up front. Is it relevant today? What are equipment and options that I have outside of even shortwave that could maybe be a, perhaps a better alternative? I'll talk about if it were me, in other words, if I started this journey all over again, what would I do different? So let's talk about essentially what is shortwave radio. It's radio broadcasting on your high frequencies are known as HF. Now the HF section of the AM band radio is only available on special radio. So your typical car radio does not do shortwave. You have to buy a radio specifically that is programmed to be able to receive these HF uh, bands on your radio. Uh, You'll find it between 30 and 30 megahertz and between 80 meters to 10 meter bands, uh, which is very common for ham radio operators. They know what those bands are. But this is where you're gonna find within those 10 meter to uh, 80 meter band, there are certain uh, portions that are set aside for shortwave radio to operate, as well as there are certain parts of those frequencies set aside for amateur radio use. So when you think of shortwave radio, you think of long distance at nighttime. It doesn't do well in the daytime because really what you need is nighttime propagation. The one thing that started all of the shortwave is, is that countries decided to broadcast information or propaganda into other countries, and it's pretty hard to block. Uh, shortwave is harder to block than it is ham radio. For example, in Cuba, in uh, some uh, uprisings, internal issues that they had a few years back, uh, they were able to pretty successfully block the 40-meter band of the ham radio, but not necessarily the shortwave. So short radio peaked in about 1989. During the Cold War, at the height of that, there was so much uh, content that was being broadcast in behind the Iron Curtain. Uh, and pretty much was used as uh, a way to try to stir up the people, make them understand that they were living under an oppressive regime. So it was it was basically, think of it as more as government and content broadcasting. Interesting to note, though, in North America and Europe, there's very little shortwave broadcasting into our countries because we don't need it. We actually have other, term, uh, other methods, and I'll show you in a second. But you would think of countries like Africa or Asia, that there would be a lot of shortwave being used because of it being a third world countries in those areas. And what's surprising, what I found out is that's not the case. Uh, FM is the predominant band where most people listen for information in content broadcasting. Shortwave broadcasting to for listeners in Africa and Asia make up only about 6% of their population. Why? Well, most content broadcasters have moved to online streaming on the internet, as well as international TV stations via satellites that are all over the globe now. So shortwave uh, broadcasting today is, we're finding that there are a reduced number of stations today because governments and and, uh, uh, mainstream media uh, are basically saying, I found other cheaper, better alternatives to do it. So it continues to decline. What you'll find, though, on broadcast stations on shortwave is a lot of it is going to be religious stations. It's going to be government broadcasting and some mainstream media, such as the BBC and ABC News. They still have uh, a quite number of shortwave uh, broadcasts that are going on today. But what you really need to focus your attention is not on the shortwave side of a shortwave radio, but it's on the single sideband. And that's where you really want to listen to. And I'll get a lot more into what single sideband is. 
but essentially it's ham radio communication uh, taking place. And the radio, if now the lower end radios don't include the single sideband, but the upper radios, and I'll show this in some slides, about $70 up, we'll start offering the single sideband option where you can actually listen to what ham radio operators are communicating on, on their ham radios. This is really where you want to be because you're going to hear information from all over different places of people, especially when things get really bad, about information that's going on in their local areas. So shortwave is not relevant. I would definitely put an X, and I wouldn't try to buy a shortwave radio today unless you bought maybe maybe one or two high-end radios that are out there. And those radios are going to include the single sideband that you can actually get a decent reception from. So... If you say, listen, hey, listen, I really want to go shortwave. Uh, I'm still sold on it. I want to do it. Well, then you better identify the stations that are going to be relevant for you to get your information from. Because not many will be able, not many of you are going to be able to access a lot of the list of stations that are out there because they're low powered uh, stations. They're on the other side of the world. Your antenna's no good. Your equipment's no good. There's propagation issues. So just because you have shortwave doesn't mean you have instant access to all of the stations all around the world. And most of the content is not even relevant to what you're going to want to listen to. Uh, the few that are out there, you better identify them now and you better write them down and program them into your radio. A typical list that you're going to see here on the right, and this comes from a shortwave uh, company called Crane. Uh, if I look at this, it doesn't tell me when they're broadcasting, do they speak in English, and who's behind it. Is it a religious station, government station, mainstream media? Who's doing this? So as, as you build your list, though, you're going to want to start to get your list. You want to either pr print it out, write it down on, on I call it old school on paper and pencil so that you can test your equipment. You don't want to be reactive. You want to be proactive. You want to know what works under your conditions, in your location, with your particular equipment that you're using, and make sure you already have those stations ready to go to listen to. So again, highlight the best stations, focus the ones that are on English. It's like, if you're me, I only speak English. And start building your list and practice, practice, practice. Another list that's out there and says, wow, there's a lot of radio stations that are out here. Mainstream media, a lot of mainstream media that are in here. Then you've got, uh, I call it the BBC, which is uh, government-based, uh, Voice of America, that's government-based, you know, paid by the government. So again, these are the type of radio stations I would not trust at all for any good, accurate information because, again, they're specifically broadcasting for a reason, just like they did during the communist days, propaganda. And I would not believe a single word that they would have to say. And then the rest are going to be religious stations, which usually have pre-recorded broadcasting uh, uh, programs that they're going to broadcast 24-7 or at certain hours. What you really want to do is be able to get into what is known as single sideband. And why do you want to go here? Well, essentially, we're 90% of ham radio operators communicate on, on their ham radios. And it's two-way ham radio communication, but it doesn't necessarily mean two people are communicating. It could be a group of 5, 10, 15, 20, taking turns in a, in a group talking. And you're able to then have all these data points from someone maybe talking in the Northeast, the Southeast, the Midwest. So, again, ham radio... Single sideband is where you want to pick up your information, get your data points, and be able to form, formulate a correct view perspective of really what's going on. So the best band to use is single sideband. So if you're not familiar with it, you know AM radio is a band. You know FM radio is a band. Well, single sideband is a band. It's equally as much as FM and AM. And again, only specific radios are going to have it. That's why you're going to find it specifically on your shortwave radios and more on your high end. Now, within single sideband, it's broken into an upper and lower. They take the band, they divide it in half, they have an upper and a lower sideband. So the upper sideband uh, is different than the lower sideband. So you have to know whether or not to tune to upper or lower sideband. Again, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for you on this. But the reason to use a single sideband is it's more efficient, less power, and you can broadcast further with a clearer signal. Uh, nice thing about this is, is that you can listen to single sideband. It doesn't require any license, so no worries about that one. And you have access to all of the frequencies. So single sideband is part of a frequency. Shortwave is part of a frequency. Commercial broadcasting is part of a frequency. So within that, you, as you're, you're going across the spectrum and trying to tune, you can access AM, FM, single sideband, commercial, military, if it's not blocked or whatever, aviation, marine, all of that stuff can be on these radios, and that's the part that it's nice and offers a lot of, I call it, uh, good available choices to gather information. 
So I'm going to break down uh, the frequencies that you really need to tune into. So if you're looking at single sideband, the first area you want to tune in is what is known as the 40 meter band. So you're going to get your frequency to 7.125 to 7.300 megahertz. And if you're uh, if radio is showing you in kilohertz, just move the decimal point three points over. So you can see it's uh, 7.125 kilohertz versus 7.125 megahertz. Nice thing about the 40 meter is it's probably the most common band, most used band of ham radio operators to use because you can use it anytime. Even in the daytime, it works decent. Nighttime works better. Long distance you can do. You can do regional. It's probably the most versatile band and, and used band. So when I'm talking about these bands in amateur, amateur radio, it starts at the 6 and goes up to the 160, okay? 40 is your number one choice, 20 is your number two, and 80 is your number three choice. So if you look at the 20 meter band, that's 14.150 to 14.350. This is, you're gonna to wanna to know each of these three. So either write them down or take a screen print or you know look at this chart or uh, send me an email and I'll send you the, uh, the band information. But the 20 meter band is what you're gonna to wanna to use and it's good because it's great long distance. You can do coast to coast in the daytime on it. You can do overseas. I've had more overseas contacts on the 20 meter band than any of the other bands. So it's just a great band. However, twilight to twilight, that's when you can use it. After it gets dark, you really need to go to the 40 meter band or even yet the 80 meter band. Now, when we talk about the 80 meter band, the 80 meter band is AM. So it's uh, 3.600 to 4.00 megahertz. It's AM, as you see up here in the band. So it's not going to be single side band. This, the 80 meter and 160 meter is AM. Um, as far as long distance and be used, Best time to use it is at nighttime, after 10 o'clock, even better. I mean, typically if the sun goes down, you can start picking up the 80 meter band, but as it gets darker and later into the evening, the better it gets. Uh, now this is gonna be the second most active band be behind the 40 meter band, as far as activity on the band. So the three bands, the 40, the 20, and the 80, different purposes, different times, and different reaches. Those are the ones that you need to really focus on. Now, you're only as good as your antenna. And typically when you buy a shortwave radio, you're gonna get a telescopic antenna. They're not good for indoors unless you're right up against the window. You really need to go outside. But who wants to go outside in the winter or in the summer with mosquitoes you know, hitting you all night long? So what you really need to do is look for something like a wire antenna that works best, where you can have it strung outside your window, uh, come underneath your window, attach it to your equipment, much, much better option than a telescopic antenna. So that's the ideal option. The, the telescopic is sub-ideal. Now you can use uh, a wire antenna indoors. Uh, there's spe uh, specific ones I'll show you in the next slide, which one actually can use for indoors. Uh, but really what you want to do is try to get the antenna outside because inside you got electrical interference, blockage from the walls, and anytime, there's, especially if there's metal, it's gonna just uh, uh, bounce the signal off of it. So for single sideband antennas, which, what you want to work great is gonna be a wire antenna, and I'll actually get into a, 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 another class of antenna to go up in, on the next slide, but the wire antenna is where you gotta start with. And they call it a random wire antenna. From my research that's out there and, and use of one, 80 feet seems to be the optimal length that you wanna run your antenna outside. Typically, it's about 135 feet spool. For this one, 60 bucks. There's other ones that you can find out there. The one that you see on the bottom basically is it's a crank one. You, you pull it out and the antenna uh, just basically unwinds 60 feet and you clip it onto the tip of your antenna, uh, telescoping antenna that's out there. So you may have to have different adapters depending on the type of radio. Like one of my radios, you know, unless I use like an alligator clip to the antenna, I had to use a BNC connector and I'll get into that a little bit more. But if you want to make it easy, use an alligator clip and, and a attach it to your existing retractable antenna, and I'll show you that in the next slide. And again, shortwave wire reel, you know, these work inside, they're okay, uh, but they are better than your retractable uh, telescoping antenna. Now, there is no perfect choice for an antenna that one size fits all, and that's because, you know, everyone has a different price range, your location's gonna vary, the topography's gonna vary, um, HOA restrictions. Some of you live in a condominium facing the wrong direction. You live in, in a, 
uh, without a balcony, live in an apartment with a balcony, live in a downtown area with a lot of buildings, uh, live in an area with a lot of mountains. We all don't have the same setup. So you're going to have to look and find antennas that will probably work best based on your limitations and restrictions of what you have to deal with. Now, when we look at a uh, random wire antenna, uh, when you attach it to either a tree, a house, outbuilding a pole, there's some considerations you have to take in, into it. It doesn't necessarily have to go in a straight line. You can zigzag it. That's okay. Uh, some people actually put those the random wires up in their antenna, or excuse me, in their attic, or they'll put them outside. But if you attach it to a tree, be aware that the tree bends. So you have to compensate for that, either in a slack or use some kind of like bungee type cord that's attached to the tree that's able to give and flex as the tree moves. Otherwise, your wire is going to snap. Um, out, uh, again, outdoor wire antennas, a uh, random wire is 80 feet that you're looking for. And the coating on the wire, black or brown is the best. If you try to get silver or copper, it's going to reflect uh, the uh, sunlight and it's going to be more noticeable. Even a green wire that's, quote, a camo wire can be a lot more noticeable than a black or brown coated wire. Uh, the idea is to go stealth on this so people don't see that you have a wire out there. So if it was me, though, the best what I would do is get an NFED half-wave multiband antenna. And you can get them for as low as $130. And I actually have this antenna, and I love it. It's the MCOM2. And I'm going to do a complete video on it, the next one that is out. This is the version 1. Version 2 just came out, and it's a box. And I'll show that in the second video. But same thing, like 63 feet of wire. Uh, and you connect it to it, and again, it doesn't have to go in a straight line. Very uh, uh, flexible as to how you can use it. it can, you can set it up to do local, long distance, in between. It's just a great antenna. And by the way, don't put that one in an antenna, in, into your indoor attic area. And I'll explain that in the next video. Now, there's all different type of connectors that are out there when you're talking in, you know, ham radio, talking uh, shortwave radio. In the ham radio world, most common one connector is the PL259 to the SO239. So if you're using, the, for example, the MCOM2 antenna, uh, you're going to have to use a PL259 to an SO239, those type of connectors, because you're going to have to use 50-ohm coax cable. Again, I'm not going to go too deep into this right now, just introducing you to this, but those are the type of connectors. But there are other ones that are out there. Uh, some radios use a B and C connector, an SMA connector, a mic jack to connect the antenna to the radio. And here's, a, for example, a, a B and C for a wire antenna. You can get this either in this, uh, either male or female on the end. The wire comes into the back. You clamp down the two screws. And depending on your radio connector, in my case, this is the one I need for my Eaton. There's other radios out there that you're going to have to have the male versus the female. This uh, SMA is another type of connector that's out there, and especially on your handheld uh, like radios like your Bofang, they use SMA connectors. So bare wire to a connector, or you can use an alligator clip to, an to your existing antenna. You can buy a cheap uh, alligator clip. You just peel back the sheathing on top of the wire so it's bare. Uh, get a pair of pliers, clamp down on it, and just clamp on the top of your antenna. And now you've got a way to connect uh, your bare wire antenna to your radio. That's the easy way of doing it. Now, single sideband, again, is a must when you're buying these radios. So don't buy anything without at least a single sideband. But again, I caution you, you can get single sideband, but you may not get much reception on it. So again, buyer beware of what you're getting out there. So here's one from, uh, you know, one radio for $80. You can go up to like the $400, which is the Cadillac. Uh, and the jacks are going to be different. Um, that are going to be on it. Could be a headphone jack, a mic jack, uh, could have its own antenna. And here's an example of a mic jack that is, if you want to connect it directly into the radio from the random wire, means you're going to have to connect the, the bare wire end of, of, of each of the jack and the wire and uh, use a connector uh, a clamp and put those together and attach to your radio. So nothing's real simple, easy, but pay attention to all the connectors that may be required to put uh, on your radio. And that's why just don't buy it and put it in the drawer and go, oh my gosh, I got the wrong connectors. As soon as you get these radios, use it, practice it, test your equipment, know how it works, know how to put it together quickly. Uh, there are radios out there that offer solar. That was the first one that I bought, a solar and a crank, nice to have, but they're basically junk radios as far as reception. The big question is, do you get a rechargeable internal lithium battery or do you offer uh, batteries uh, that, you re that you put into the radio? On, on the Eaton 750-400, which I have, I love it because it has uh, my own batteries that I can put in. What's the advantage of that? I have a solar backup. 
So I can recharge my rechargeable batteries, put them in, they last twice as long, and I'm never in a downtime because I have backup batteries. Where if you go into rechargeable mode, you're recharging the radio uh, at the same time, you're probably not able to use it. So again, my two cents is I prefer the battery, uh, uh, putting in actual batteries than rechargeable, internal. So again, this is the gold standard, and I'll talk more about that radio later. If you really want to go the next level up, then you want to look at a pure ham radio. And there are different options that are out there, uh, anywhere from like $90 to the ICOM 7300, which I have, it's $1,300. Uh, love that radio. That's my radio. And I can do, I do shortwave off of it. I listen to everything that's possible on it because it's just, it's just a great radio. And the ICOM, the IC 718 will pretty much do the same thing too. This has a lot more filters into it. And again, what's your price point? Um, if you don't have your license, just don't connect the mic. That's the simplest way of, of doing it so you don't get into trouble. Uh, it's going to require coax. It's going to require an antenna. Uh, and again, the ICOM, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the MCOM 2 antenna is a great choice, but all these add up. And so what is your budget? It's also going to require what is known as a uh, AC to DC power supply, where it takes your 120 volt AC current to like 13.8 volts DC current to operate your ham radios. So you're looking at some, some money in here. But if you think you're going to go and get your ham radio license uh, down the road, you want to invest into this now while the equipment is available. Second, if, if the government totally collapses and there's no FCC, plug in the mic jack at that point. Now you're well, getting your license. But if you get these and you practice listening, then it'll be much easier at that point later on to go ahead and be able to learn how to transmit on the radios. There's another option. It's called software-defined radios. And uh, it's a great way of being able to do it. Essentially, you're going to take a device. This is the low end, the SDR play for 125. Basically, only allows you one antenna connection, which is that red cap. I have the next one up. It's 250. allows at least three antennas. And they'll give you the free uh, SDR software that goes with it, which is like this. This is beautiful. Uh, it allows me to have all the functions of my ham radio. And actually, my ham radio is, operates through this, but I'm not going to get into that. If there's a pan adapter in my radio that allows me to use this screen, and I can actually you know, transmit right off of the screen. But the beautiful thing about this is it has built-in filters. It allows you to just, instead of scrolling down and hoping that you hit a station, it actually shows you what stations are broadcasting at that particular time. There'll be spikes along here in, in the waveform. You just take your cursor over to that spot, click it on, and you're listening immediately to the station and you can tune it. I mean, it's just unbelievable option. Uh, but it does require a laptop and the, the SDR play device and an antenna. So again, next level up, here is the uh, SDR option that you can use. There is a learning curve. And if you, some of you end up going this way and have questions, just go ahead and uh, email me at... Uh, uh, ham radio made simple at gmail.com and I'll see if I can't help you out. I've helped other people with other things already. So make sure you get a, a, a good set of headphones. And I mean, good set start at $40 and make sure that the jack works too. Um, all these jacks are different sizes. It's 3.5 millimeter jack and other different sizes. So again, uh, you can test your equipment, find out what works, but get a good set of headphones because the beautiful thing about that is it allows you to pick up and listen to weaker signal broadcasting that's going on. Now, there are uh, lists that are out there. Here's a channel list, and I have this right near my radio. In any event, I will go to this, but I've tried to listen to some of these. I don't pick them up. Maybe it's because no one's broadcasting them because it's not a disaster. But again, uh, it's good to have, uh, again, resource materials out there that you can have printed out, sitting near your radio, ready to go when things go bad. Uh, since I've been talking a lot about single sideband, that's on the HF or your high frequency, you're really going to need to get also another radio, which is known as your UHF, VHF radio. And this is where you can listen locally. So, you know, you can get something like a Bofang radio that's about $70. Don't go below this particular model. Uh, replace the antenna with a signal stick. A uh, link will be in the description below. That'll probably give you about a 40 to 50% increase in range of the radio. And just don't hit the press to talk and start listening on there. Doesn't have to be expensive. You can spend more. There's better radios out there. The Anytone Digital 878 is a great choice, but now you're up to you know 250 to 300 dollars. Uh, but again, doesn't have to be expensive. You can start with this. 
Uh, nice thing about it is you can early on learn how to monitor and listen to repeaters, listen to the simplex frequencies. Uh, it's just a great way to get used and familiar with the radio. And again, like I said, <laughs> if there's no FCC, you know, you're, you're used to using the radio but not broadcasting or transmitting on the radio, then you're ready to go. So again, great choice. Repeater book, is a, there's a link below for um, a video that I've done on how to find where these repeaters in your area and how to program and set the radio up. And as I mentioned earlier, if it were me, what would I do different today? Knowing what I know now, what would I do different today? Well, I just skip shortwave radios. I wouldn't buy them, but I would buy one, uh, the one that I bought. But listen, they're not, they don't perform well. They have, the speakers are bad. There's not many usable stations. Uh, the single sideband, if, and again, it has to have if you're going to use it. The reception is poor. You get a limited number of ham radio operators. But you know what? Something is better than nothing. But if you do want to go the radio route, consider the Eaton Elite 750. That's the one I have. Uh, it's a great radio. It, it works well. Outside works even better. $400 if they're even available. I'm telling you, by the time some of you are watching these videos, price could be way above that or not even available. Uh, it's going to require some kind of antenna. You can start out on the low end with a wire antenna, 80 feet. Uh, get your BNC connector that I showed you earlier, and you're all set to go on this radio. Pretty simple. Or you can do the alligator clip, which is another way of doing it. But again, if it were me, I think I'd probably go, my first choice for about $800, since I have multiple laptops, I would do the SDR and uh, get the SDR Uno software. This is the one that I do own. I use it uh, connected to my uh, ham radio to the software, which allows me to, to basically use this, the computer screen to tune and uh, pick the bands and the frequencies and everything I want right through it. Uh, it's a great tool, but without a ham radio, you can still use this. You can use multiple antennas. It can actually uh, go up to three antennas. You want one for your UHF, VHF, and one for your HF antenna. So depending on your connectors and your setup, that's why they give you some flexibility there. So your HF is going to give you your distance, and typically it can be the MCOM2. It uh, could be something else if you have something else. Uh, J-Pole is a low end for the UHF, VHF. This one you can put right outside the window. Uh, by the window or in your attic for 65 bucks. And now you have the UHF, VHF bands locally. You don't have to have that, that other radio. But it does require coax and connectors uh, when it comes to your uh, antenna wire uh, coming from the MCOM2. And all, this is always predicated on the fact that you have a battery backup system in play. So my next video is I'm going to do a deeper dive into the MCOM2 antenna. Uh, the thing that you're going to like about this is that you can set this up in different positions and low to the ground is going to give you what is known as a uh, uh, near vertical incident sky wave antenna. Essentially what this does, this is what emergency personnel uses in the field, it allows you to get more local connections on the 40 and 80 meter bands. Again, a deeper dive onto that. I'll talk about solar options. That's going to be critical. Your HF digital modes is where you're going to, if you're a ham radio operator, you're going to want to be able to do HF digital modes, and it's going to be able to require you to use lower power, and it'll cover greater distances than voice will. Uh, groups to join that make sense can help you and be part of something that is, is already prepared and ready to go as soon as all hell breaks loose. And I'll talk about, you know, equipment, you know, as far as what goes into a go bag, when, you know, should you even consider a go bag? And again, I'll, I'll get into all of that. If you think other people should watch this video, then hit the like. If you don't, don't hit the like. And if you, you like it enough that a lot of people should see this, also hit the subscribe button because then YouTube channel will put this up in the queue a little faster and easier and others will have a, 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 hard, a less harder time trying to stumble and find this type of video. But I appreciate you uh, listening and watching this video. This is MJ, call sign KW3KW with Ham Radio Made Simple, out.